If I would have sold and I was bearish the entire time they were hawkish in 2015, I would have missed out on the S&P 500 going up 62.97%. Look at this bull market. Look at, the, look at the price increase. If I would have followed the narratives of what they're saying right now, I would have missed out almost 3,000% on Bitcoin. This signaled the exact... <laughs> it signaled the exact like moment when we started getting catalyzed into a bull market. Look, July 2019. I can't follow the main, I'm done with the mainstream narratives. I'm not following the mainstream narrative. talk about Bitcoin's price. Today we're going to be doing a Bitcoin price prediction. There's so many people that are bearish on YouTube. I see the tweets. I see people talking on Twitter. I see people on YouTube. Bearish thumbnails, bearish titles, bearish demeanor. And I don't like it. I'm here to make money. Cryptocurrency is an asset class that makes money. If you look throughout history, how many millionaires have been made in cryptocurrency? If you're here, how much money did you make on the last cycle? Or did you not sell the top? <laughs> when you're talking about selling, you should be talking about selling near the top of cryptocurrency. Let me be clear with you guys. I wanna be clear with everybody in this crypto market. I've been in two different bear markets, two different cycles. The time you wanna talk about selling or being bearish is when everybody's in the market. I want you to think about common sense, just common sense. Just, just basic understanding. I want everybody to take a deep breath. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. And just relax. Let go of all the market noise, all the market narratives. Just common sense. When is the time you should be bearish? The time you should be bearish is when cryptocurrency is at all-time high, when everybody's freaking out, when we have meme coins going up 500% a day, when everybody's talking about cryptocurrency and it's being talked about on the biggest football stadiums when it's being when it's being talked about in the NFL and these huge marketing events like the big marketing events when there's actors right talking about cryptocurrency when there's major news outlets major news outlets like the Super Bowl like the Super Bowl right cryptocurrencies in the forefront of the Super Bowl, when it's being talked about every single major actor or famous person. That is when you want to be bearish. Why? Because that's a signal for the top. The time to be bearish is when everybody's over exuberant and hype about the cryptocurrency market. That's when you want to be bearish. Now, let me ask you a question. Leave a comment below. When's the time you want to be bullish? The time you want to be bullish and is when everybody's bearish and there's nobody in the market and everybody left the market and it's very scarce and YouTube channels are getting less views and nobody's talking about crypto and everybody's saying it's a scam and when there's lawsuits and scandals. I want you to just think about the two scenarios I gave you. What scenario are we in right now? Should I be bearish when it's already, the, the asset price has already gone down hundreds of percentages? No, no. Common sense says no. Common sense, if you understand buy low and sell high, you should be doing the exact opposite of the market narratives. Everyone's bearish right now. So what does that mean? You stay and remain bearish? That's how you miss the bottom. You should be bullish right now. Everyone's left. It's common sense. It's so common sense. It's crazy to me how people can get lost in the numbers so much and that's why i want to make a bitcoin price prediction today today i'm going to go over bitcoin's price but i'm going to give you quantitative evidence so although i gave you qualitative common sense at the beginning of this video by just simply saying like what's the obvious thing what's the, ob the obvious thing is that right now it feels like a monumental bear market like everyone left lawsuits everywhere right everyone's bearish Everyone's giving bearish reasons, right? September, how it's supposed to be the most bearish month in all of cryptocurrency, right? Everyone's bearish. 
Do you want to keep following the regular market narratives? Do you want to keep following crypto mainstream media? Or when are you going to step out and make decisions for yourself? When are you going to step out, right? And do what the opposite of the masses are doing. That's how you make money. That's how you get prices for cheap, cheaper than everybody else. You have to move before the crowd. If you keep following the crowd, you will get left in the dust. And I also want to say that there's a lot of people being penny wise and dollar opposite. They're worried about a 5% drop when you're missing the big picture of a 200, maybe even 500% increase in the next couple of months. Don't be penny wise and dollar opposite. Think about the big variables of your life. This even works with basic personal finance. If you are having issues with your finances and you're spending too much money, your liabilities are exceeding um, your, your assets and your, or your income. Don't go for the Netflix subscription that's $7.99 a month. You need to go for the big ones, right? The, the big expenses like your food habit that you're spending $1,500 a month. That, that's what you need to go for. Maybe you need, to, you need to start cooking instead of eating out. Why would you go for the $7.99 when you can go for the $1,500 expense? People are treating, they're trading and investing because there's been so much pain. I want to say this. This is a psychology thing. This is a psychology thing. It's an emotional thing that a lot of people deal with. And I actually had to deal with myself and, and I had to break out of it. And this is why I'm trying to communicate that with you guys. I'm a normal human like you. I go through every, everything you guys th go through, except for I have the experience to be able to look at it and, and you know, just really hedge off of my experience and my and, and emotional control I've built and the risk tolerance I've built over the years of being in two separate bear cycles, right? A lot of people are dealing with a lot of pain. Uh, a lot of people have businesses in crypto and they've just been experiencing pain after pain, at, you know, rejection after rejection, taking losses, taking losses, taking losses that they become essentially, it's become like a habitual pattern. You have to break out of it. And I just want to say very clearly, I know a lot of what I just said is opinion based. I get it. I can't really prove it, but there's numbers I'm going to prove in this video. In this video, I'm going to give you quantitative evidence, real evidence, real evidence to why I think we are in a bull market and everything is noise. This is all noise. It's short term noise. And most of the indicators or things that people are talking about is enclosed in an isolated vacuum. It's very small. There's a lot, there's a lot of things. And, and again, the reason why I'm saying this is not to compare. I'm saying this because I have to analyze the bear case. I, I have to look at people's opinions and see, okay, maybe I'm tripping. Maybe I'm wrong. Okay. Who's bearish and why? What are the reasons why? And most of the reasons I've seen from my research is either number one, very emotional, and there's not really too much to back up. It's, it's not really, there's nothing to back it up. It's, it's a lot of, a lot of uh, opinion, which number one, I can't really, I can't really, uh, you know, take that at, in my investment thesis. It's usually that. Number two, it's usually the indicator is encapsulated in a closed vacuum, meaning the indicator just, it, it looks at one dimension of the equation and, and it excludes everything else. Or number three, they're just a wrong interpretation of the data, right? Because again, I want to show you that what I'm, what I'm, I'm going to give you actual evidence. I'm going to give you numbers, 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 right? Some people say numbers don't lie. I think sometimes numbers do lie, but it gives us a really close version of the truth. So that's what I want to do today. But I also want to say, I also want to say, um, you know, Remember, let, let, let's let's have a refresher. Let's let's really just think about what we're doing here and be grateful, right? Be grateful that you understand crypto, that you're in a in a market where we appreciate by mo monumental percentages like this. This is the total two. So this is all altcoins excluding Bitcoin. That's a four thousand three hundred and fifty four percent increase from the bottom. So while people are worried about Bitcoin going to twenty k, which is like maybe a 10% drop. We'll look at the actual numbers. Let's, let's look at what's Bitcoin going to, to 20K. People, a lot of people are worrying about Bitcoin going to 20K. Bitcoin going to 20K is a, okay, it's, it's a little bit more, an 18% drop. So while people are worried about an 18% an drop, I'm worried about losing out on 4,354% increase. That was last cycle. If we go here, I mean, we're talking about like crazy percentages. Like what, what is that? It's 1.3 million percent increase 
on altcoins, 1.3 million percent. But people are worried about a 20% drop, a 20% drop. Get it through your head. Stop thinking so short term. Nothing in life works short term. Everything you've ever wanted. You want a great body, right? Everything you've ever wanted. You want a great business. It doesn't work in month terms. I try to tell so many people, I know so many young people that are doing short-term trading and, and, and a lot of the reason why they're doing short-term trading is because of the dream of financial independence, right? The dream of being able to pay your bills and they're like, that's the only way because I got to pay it monthly. I'm like, if you just drop that dream, work a good job making six figures and invest over a long period of time, you might actually realize the dream. It's, it's the lust. People lust over something and, and it puts them in a horrible situation. Month to month doesn't work with anything. It doesn't work for your body. Like think about, uh, I want you to think about a pro fitness guy saying, hey, I'm going to, you know, uh, prepare for this monumental event, right? In the next 30 days. And, and they're not thinking long-term. Like just think about that. You can't get any significant results thinking month to month. You can't. And it's, in my personal opinion, especially apparent in crypto, considering the fact that you have these crazy increases in price over a four-year period of time. So you have to think over a four-year period of time. You have to think in terms of years, not months. I know a lot of people want to become financially independent. I don't recommend a month-to-month short-term trading strategy to become financially independent. I recommend you build a business. You want to become financially independent like me? Build a business. Build cash flow on a month-to-month basis. That's way better and way more stable than day trading day trading or or even week trading, swing trading. I don't swing trade. I do more position trade. You can call it a swing trade, but swing trades are weekly. Swing trades are weekly. I I do quarter trade, like quarterly trades, three months, four months, five months, six months, and mostly yearly. That That's what I think is better. But the problem with my strategy and what a lot of people don't want to accept is that it can't make them financially independent over a short period of time. Their, their, their financial independence they want it in, in a week. They want it in a month. The problem with my strategy is that people don't have the time horizon that I have. But over the experience that I've had in crypto, I've realized that if you don't have my time horizon, you don't make as much money. You don't get the 50 to 100 Xs. You get the, the 100%. You get the doubling your money in a year. Maybe if you're a good scalp trader, if you're a good day trader, you miss out on the big fish. Worrying, worrying about the small fish, you, you miss out on the big fish. So... I want to be grateful. I want to say I have gratitude for being able to have this experience in the market and also being able to make these crazy 1.35 million percent increases. This is this is monumental. This is monumental. So stop worrying about a 20 percent drop, 10 percent drop and use risk management. That's another thing. People don't have these risk management strategies in place. And the next video I'm going to make, it could be the next video. Most likely it will be the next video. I just had to make this Bitcoin price prediction. I was supposed to make a the risk management video today because that's the next video in the series. By the way, if you're new to this channel, please do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, like the video. Um, we have a series where I actually expose 100x altcoin. Um, and you know, I want you guys to watch it. I'm going to leave the series in the description below in the, in the pinned comment. And if you want to get access to all of my strategies, my trades, my buy and sell calls, as well as a community of seven and eight figure earners, high quality, dense information, I recommend taking advantage of the discount in CoinPix Inner Circle, which is right now 50% off. This is my trading group. I have all of my experience for the past eight years, everything I've ever done in cryptocurrency, everything I've ever learned, these long-term trading strategies, you know, being able to trade in Web3, understanding hardware wallets and security, also understanding fundamental analysis, technical analysis, the whole nine yards. I highly recommend you take your education serious and head on over to CoinPix Inner Circle. Again, subscribe to the channel, like the video. I give out a lot of free information. And if you're smart, you would turn on the post notification bell. There's a little notification icon under the video. If you turn that on, you actually get the videos first and you get notified on your phone if you have the YouTube app and the notification set up there. That's what I would do uh, 100%. So Again, let's be grateful. We're in cryptocurrency. It appreciates by a large percentages. When you think short term and you think narrow and you, and you don't have gratitude, you start making decisions monthly, which I believe does not get you results in life. It, it's, it's moving out of fear. A lot of people are moving out of fear because of a lot of the rejection that they've experienced in this market. It's psychology. Understand a lot of these businesses are losing a lot of money. You know this. You know this. 
People are getting hit left and right. I experienced it too. They're getting hit. I see it all over. I just want to say, uh, shouts out to BitBoy Crypto. He got hit. He got hit. Recent experiences with his business. I'm not, I'm not going to go into the details, but he had the resilience to make his own, uh, uh, you know, a new YouTube channel. And I hope his new YouTube channel does well. And I support his new YouTube channel. But people are getting hit. That's just another situation of just people just getting hit left and right. Me too. My business model got hit. Other people's business model got hit. Everyone's getting like, it's, it's pretty devastating. So it's no wonder that that pain moves over into people's investment thesis and their investment strategies. It's no wonder people do that. Pe people are doing that. And I, I want to break us out of it. Let's break out of it. Let's break out of it and, and get optimistic. Because again, I want to say it again. Let's be grateful for the fact that it goes up 1.3 million percent. Last cycle, 4,000%. These are crazy numbers that you don't get anywhere else. Even if you make just one great trade and you get 5,000% on the trade or whatever the case is, that trumps every loss. It just trumps every loss. We need risk management, guys. We need risk management. All right, sorry. That's, a lot, that's enough ranting. I had to get it out because a lot of this is psychology. I'm going to show you the numbers, but I've already shown you some of these numbers. Not all of them. Like there's brand new stuff here, but I've shown you a lot of this and a lot of it is just psychology. Where, where are you at? I know it feels painful, but are you going to have the resilience to push through the bear market? Are you going to have the resilience to push through the bear market or are you going to keep letting the pain bring you down lower and lower to the point where you can't get yourself out and you don't make any money off crypto? I don't know about you guys, but I won't do it. So let's do a, a quick short term and I have some more research for you guys. I'm going to do a quick short term kind of just prediction here, not long term, not like, you know, the top of next cycle, crazy you know, unrealistic, you know, Bitcoin's going to hit $2 million type of, I know there's a lot of people out there doing that. And, and, you know, I believe Bitcoin's going to hit a million dollars one day, but I do want to show you the short term so that, and this is short term, right? So again, you know, uh, uh, this, this can uh, give a lot of people cr uh, clarity. So if we look at the bottom of Bitcoin's price, people were, I saw some videos. I don't want to talk about it too much, but people were saying that the Bitcoin having is not predictable and it's not like it's it's not going to be like it was in the past and i'm just like it's the only thing predictable in crypto what are you talking about i mean i'm not going to take people's words out of context but people i would say from what i've seen a couple of influencers not everybody i would say that they're not taking the bitcoin having as serious as they should this is the most significant event in cryptocurrency and as a whole Besides the Federal Reserve, number two is the Bitcoin halving. The Federal Reserve is on, is on top of all asset classes in the world. It's, it's essentially, if you guys don't know what the Federal Reserve does, they make decisions on if the money should be printed or not printed. So that's the most significant, but that's for like the world assets, the world risk on assets. In the crypto world specifically, the most significant event is the Bitcoin halving. Because if you understand what I just said, the Federal Reserve is essentially monetary policy for all financial assets across the world. The Bitcoin halving is essentially monetary policy for Bitcoin, which is the biggest cryptocurrency and it catalyzes and moves the entire market. Ethereum, all altcoins follow Bitcoin's price trajectory. Almost identical, almost identical. I proved that in other videos. So this is like, let's not stop playing with the Bitcoin having. Stop playing with it. It's very, very important. So if we look at the bottoms of Bitcoin to where Bitcoin's, uh, you know, the Bitcoin having these white lines are the Bitcoin having events. So if we look at the bottom, I want to simply look at two numbers. Okay. I'm simply looking at the percentage increase from the bottom to the Bitcoin having, from the bottom to the Bitcoin having. From the bottom to the Bitcoin having, and the amount of time it took to get there. And I got some numbers on my phone here. You don't have to look at it because um, that's irrelevant. But I actually did some math. Let me see if I can. Yeah, here we go. So what I did is I took two things. I took the average first off. I took the average of the amount of percentage increase. So I took 518, 307, and 182 divided it by three. So that's kind of like the first prediction. And that average gave me an average percentage increase of uh, 335%. So an average increase of 335% for Bitcoin's price, that would actually bring us right here, which is a $66,000 Bitcoin. Now, if you look at it, there's actually a decay rate. So if you look at it the first time, it's 518%. Then we have 307 and then 182. The trend here is that it goes down, like it's less and less, right? It's, it's definitely less and less. So I don't think the average would be a good prediction. 
So I actually took the decay rate, and you can look up the, uh, the actual formula for decay, and the decay rate is actually 0.3525. And if you take that into consideration to make the next prediction, which I believe is a little bit more accurate, if you take that into consideration, then actually it's act mind blowing, but we have the fourth number in the sequence or the fourth prediction would be 64.17%. Do you guys realize that that's exactly where we are? Right here, 64%, 65, 64, whatever you wanna call it. That is the exact price that we have been playing on with Bitcoin. This, this level here, I'm gonna bring this down so you can see it. This level here is what we've been fighting on. So, so we're like, so, so do you really think it's gonna go south from here is the question. Like, do you guys really think it's gonna go below that? It might short term, but we're exactly where we need to be. We're exactly where we need to be. Th this range is all I need. I don't care. I don't care about Bitcoin going to all time high. I care about Bitcoin staying strong in this range and then it get catalyzed into a bull run like it always does. Because remember, this prediction is not for after the bull run. I mean, if we do that prediction, it gets crazy, right? If we do this prediction, that gets crazy, right? If we do this prediction, that gets crazy. I'm talking about the numbers before the Bitcoin halving event. Before the Bitcoin halving event. We're there. So the question is, do you really want to risk it for the downturn of the market for maybe a 20% decrease when the numbers are stating that we're exactly where we need to be? The numbers are stating from Bitcoin's specific price that we're exactly where we need to be. I don't know. I don't think it's worth risking that. Another thing I want to show you, if you haven't seen this chart, I've, I've talked about it in multiple videos. I'm the only one that's ever, I mean, maybe there's other people that have done it. I've never seen it before, but this is proprietary information um, that I have created myself with the Federal Reserve. So like I told you guys, the Federal Reserve, they choose to either print money or take money out of the market. That's basically the only decisions they make. I mean, it's not straightforward like that. They're not like, hit the green button and start printing money, hit the red button and start taking money out of the market. But essentially they, they, they put in, uh, monetary policy that makes that happen. So they're either putting money in the market or taking money out. And I color coded it. And I also color coded it for the intensity. So if they're putting a lot of money in, I, I made it darker. If they're putting a little bit of money in, it's lighter, vice versa. If they're taking a whole bunch of money out, I made it super dark, right? So I color coded it and I actually color coded it over the S&P 500 because the S&P 500 is considered a risk on asset similar to Bitcoin. It's very similar to Bitcoin, but it has more price history. It's been out for longer, so we can analyze it for a longer data set. So that's very important. Now, if you look at the green lines, these are actually Bitcoin having events. And if you look at the red lines, these are actually uh, presidential elections. We'll have deeper videos in the future. So what I want to show you, and I've talked about this in other videos, I'm going to dive deeper in it though. We're also going to be looking at the volatility of the S&P 500 index. A lot of big macro guys use the volatility index as a way to, to know when the market's going to dump or when the market's going to pump or whatever the case is. Um, so I want to use the volatility S&P 500. Basically, the volatility index shows when there's a lot of volatility. When, and volatility basically means when the price fluctuates a lot. Like when there's a lot of activity, when there's a lot of activity, that is the volatility in S&P 500 index. And I want to show you the correlation. It's going to blow your mind a little bit deeper than what I'm talking about here. <laughs> it's going to blow your mind a lot. So first things first, I want to show you a couple of zones here. This was the big depreciation in price here. That's like a big bear market. That would be considered a big price drop. That's a monumental price drop in the S&P 500. There's only a couple events. That's a 46% down, right? This event here is down 27%. I wouldn't consider that as bad as that, right? This right here is another big price depreciation in the S&P 500. So we're analyzing the bear market, right? And then here's another one. So these are all like 40 plus percent, right? These are all 40 per plus percent of the market falling. So those events, if you notice, just look at the chart. They're, they, they're usually around the red areas. The red areas just so happen to be the printing of money. So let me be clear with you guys. When they lower interest rates, they print money. So the red zones are showing when they printed money. And the aggressive red is when they're like all out printing like crazy. So look at this. Look at this. When they print money, the market falls. It goes against the exact opposite of what everybody's saying. Everybody keeps saying, hey, Alex, when they flip dovish and they start printing money, we're going to go into a bull run. 
That's true, but not, not necessarily. In the initial, the market falls. This is where the big drops are. And the, this is where the bear markets are. That's a bear market. When they printed money initially, there was a monumental bear market. And then over time, that printing of money catalyzed us into a bull market. That's how it works. That's how it works. So the, so the thing is, we're not printing it. We have shown no signs of printing money. As you can see, this light pink here, that was like a, them lowering interest rates a little bit. And that was the sign, right? That was the sign. Here, this signaled the exact top. This signaled, the light pink is signaled the exact top. And here, it came a little bit after. But even if you followed this indicator, you would have got out near the top, right? So what do you think I'm looking for? I'm looking for a light pink. And if you look at all the narratives in the mainstream, every single narrative is saying that they're not going to lower interest rates. They're actually going to increase interest rates. So by the numbers, let's look at it. Every single time they increase interest rates, the market goes into a bull run. Now, the white here is when interest rates were at zero. So I'm not, I'm going to ignore that. I'm not even going to take that in consideration. I want to pull up in a different chart because this one's a full chart here. Let's look at every time they were increasing interest rate or they were hawkish, which is exactly where we're at now. We're in hawkish territory. We're, we're hawkish. They're increasing interest rates over time. They're either keeping it the same or, or increasing it. It's high interest rates. Look at, look at this, bro. Look at this. If I would have sold, <laughs> if I would have sold and I was bearish the entire time they were hawkish in 2015, I would have missed out on the S&P 500 going up 62.97%. Look at this bull market. This is hawkish. This is hawkish territory. Look at the, look at the price increase. L let's look at the date, ready? January 2016, right? January 2016 to July 2019. Let's look at the BLX. January, right? It's going to blow your mind, right? January 2016. Right? January 2016. What was it? July? It was July something. It was like July 2019 or something like that. Let me see. Let me just confirm that. Yeah, it was July 2019, right? If I follow the narratives that people are talking about now where, hey, it's hawkish. It's hawkish. It's hawkish. They're, they're, they're uh, taking money out of the system. They're making it hard to borrow money. Right? If I follow the narratives right now, I would have missed out. On January to 2016, wait, where is it? January 2016 to July 2019, which is like right here. I would have missed out, and that's Bitcoin on 2,922 percent. I would, if I would have followed the narratives of what they're saying right now, I would have missed out almost 3,000 percent on Bitcoin. I don't even want to go into this. This is gonna blow your mind. Let's go to 5, 2000. Was it 2016? January, this signaled the exact, <laughs> when they flipped hawkish is exactly, it signaled the exact like moment when we started getting catalyzed into a bull market. That, that's insane. So you got to make your, you got to do your own research guys. Look, July, 2019. I can't follow the, I'm done with the mainstream narratives. I'm not following the mainstream narratives. I, people are saying, let me say it again. The federal reserve is pulling money out of the monetary system. They're taking money out. They're taking money off the balance sheet. They're increasing interest rates. So it makes it harder for you to borrow money. The banks are not taking loans out because it's high interest rates. That's a bad thing, right? Common sense says, Hey, there's not as much credit. Credit is expensive. They're not printing any more money. This is bad for the economy, right? I'm going to show you the proof again, again. I want you guys to get it through your skull. That situation I just explained to you was right here. From here to here, that is them taking money out of the monetary system. That is them taking money out of the monetary system. And if you followed that narrative, you would have missed out on the entire bull market in 2016. The entire bull market, you would have missed out if you followed that narrative. It does not make sense. I believe, yes, common sense says this, and they made the system in a way where that, that seems like it makes sense, right? It seems like, hey, they're taking money out of the system. There's not any liquidity, so it's going to be hard. But the numbers don't say that. 
The numbers don't say that. They just don't say it, right? Let's look further, right? Let's look a little bit further. So for example, here's another one. Here's another one right here, right? As you can see, yellow is them keeping it the same. Green is what? I told you guys. Red is when they print. Green is when they increase interest rate or they're hawkish. Another one. Now, we don't have price history for Bitcoin because the Bitcoin wasn't out. But look at this bull market. Up 40%. 40%. 40%. 40%. Don't miss out on the last half of this crazy all-out cycle. Because if you notice, right now, so the white, I want you guys to know. There's more details on this chart in CoinPix Inner Circle, by the way. But the white is when they kept interest rates at zero, zero to 0.25, like the lowest interest rate you can. So typically what happens is the market, they print money, they print money, the market dumps, right? Look, they print money, the market dumps. I'm going to show you with actual math. They print money, the market dumps. It stays interest rates at zero. It catalyzes everything into a bull market. Interest rates at zero, interest rates at zero. And then they go hawkish. And then we see the second half of it. We see the second half of the bull market. So what do you see now? What do you see now? Right here, interest rates at zero, interest rates at zero, hawkish, aggressively hawkish. This is the second half. Where, and, and don't get me wrong, I do believe there's gonna be a mayhem event. I, I told you over and over again, there's gonna be one big event where the market falls substantially, but it's gonna be signaled by them printing money. And we have no signs of them printing money. We have no signs of them printing money. I didn't even show you the volatility uh, S&P 500. So if we look at the VIX or the volatility index, Typically, we see major falls with high volatility. That gives us like a confirmation that the market's going to fall, right? These big spikes. So you see one spike here, one spike here, one spike here. Those are big, big spikes, high volatility, major volatility. Why? Because everybody's panicking. It's a panic event. I told you guys in the past. I told you guys in the past. The reason why I think it works this way, the reason why I think the market falls when they print money, which goes against common sense, is because when they print money, this is essentially an emergency event. When the Federal Reserve prints money, I want you to understand this. The world hates the Federal Reserve for printing money. They hate it with all of their soul. They, just, they don't like it. It really proves that the Federal Reserve dominates the world because they can print money. Like they can literally make money out of thin air and give it to whoever they want, right? The, the world hates it. So for them, they're like, Okay, I'm, we're, we're going we're gonna to use this with discretion. As you can see, look at the colors. The minority of the time, they're, look at the reds. The minority of the time, they're printing. They try to do it and get it over real quick and then like try to throw it under the rug. It's like an emergency thing for them. They're like, they basically print when the world's like about to shut down financially. When the financial world's about to like get really bad, they inject liquidity. They inject liquidity, inject liquidity. So a minority of the time is when they're decreasing interest rates, a minority of the time. So this is considered a essentially emergency, emergency event. It's emergency. Like it's, it's a, it's a horrible event. Like when you break your leg and you have to go, like you don't always, when you go to the doctors, you're not going in, uh, you know, the emergency vehicle, right? You're not going in the ambulance every time you go to the doctor, a minority of the time you're going in the ambulance, a minority of the time. So it's the same thing with the printing. When we get these big panic events, here's data that shows the volatility index spikes. People panic and freak out. They, it's an emergency event. So as you can see, every single time we had red, look at the right-hand side, we have the volatility index spiking. This all makes sense. Volatility index spiking. We come over here. That's the highest it's ever been. Big time volatility index spiking. Over here. The three times the volatility index spiked is the three times we have a monumental drop. And it's also the three times where we have them printing money. Let me say it again. I want to say it again for people that didn't really catch what I just said. There's been three times the volatility index spiked in a substantial level. All three times the market fell into a bear market, which was 40 plus percent. All three times the S&P 500 fell below 40 percent. And all three times is when they printed money. If you guys didn't just catch what I said, do you realize how many narratives I have just debunked with factual evidence, with facts, with proof, with quantitative, undeniable evidence? There is not one person that can disprove what I am trying to tell you guys. Please send, tell them to send me a DM. I want to 
I want to make money. I invite any crypto analyst, any macro analyst, anybody that wants to debunk what I just said, please watch the video, look at what I'm saying and debunk it because I don't want to lose money. I want to be humble about it. I want to take other people's opinions into consideration. I want everyone to win. Like I like I want to be wrong so that I don't lose money, right? I don't you know I I, we all like to be right, but if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. And, and I, you know, I'll take it. But the numbers, the risk to reward, the whole thought process of thinking long-term and not short-term, it's like it all plays out. It all plays out. Even the price prediction is literally signaling that we're exactly what we're supposed to be. If you take the decay rate of the bottom to the next Bitcoin halving, we're exactly where we're supposed to be. So I don't get it. I, I don't understand. Please, like, let me know. Why are people bearish? Why? Why? Because of the mainstream narrative thesis? Because of the news? Because everyone's bearish? It doesn't make sense. You're supposed to, be, when everybody's bearish, you're supposed to be bullish. When everybody's bullish, you're supposed to be bearish. The time to be bearish was right here. Jeez, bro. Like, jeez. Like, I don't get it. This was the time to be bearish. The market's been falling for so long. Do you think the market's going to fall forever? I don't understand this. It really blows my mind. Like, you know, it's funny. I just thought of this. I'll do this live, right? From here to here, how long has the bear market been? 371 days, right? We have 371 day bear market. From here to here, 392 days bear market. Okay, let's go over here. Come here to the bottom. We have 427 days bear market, right? 427. So that's the longest number. That's the big, biggest number we have. 161 day bear market. Okay, great. So you guys really think, right? You guys really think that we're in a bear market for 672 days and it's never happened before in crypto? And, and every, I, I, like, I'm sorry, but the data, the math, the proof does not play out to a bear market. I don't care who's talking. Please, please tell me I'm wrong. At me on Twitter. Go on Twitter. At me. Show me proof. Not closed vacuum proof. Please. Not closed vacuum proof. And not don't talk about the Federal Reserve because there's a lot of people that are interpre interpreting that the wrong way. Also, I want to show you the last thing before we end the video. I was kind of going, I was like, look, okay, maybe I'm wrong. What are the whales doing? Right? So if you look... From what I've seen, most of the whales are accumulating, not the not these cold storage wallets, because this is a trading, this is trading. Like this is Binance wallet. I'm talking about people that are holding crypto. So for example, this guy, he's holding crypto. Do you do you see how much Bitcoin he just accumulated? Look at that. 21,000 Bitcoin he just accumulated. Let's keep going. This is a regular wallet. Accumulated 1,200, accumulated 915. This person here actually sold some Bitcoin. So there you go, we have a seller. This person here sold some Bitcoin. This person here accumulated Bitcoin. This is a, a trading exchange, I believe. Yes, this is Bitfinex. This person accumulated Bitcoin. This person sold Bitcoin. Most of them are accumulating from what I see. There's a couple people selling though, don't get me wrong. It's not like perfectly, like it's not perfect, but there's a lot of people accumulating Bitcoin. Big whales accumulating Bitcoin. So all in all, I believe the quantitative and qualitative evidence point to the simple fact that, hey, in the bear market, it's going to feel like the bear market. It really is because that's that's the point. They're trying to, there's a lot of people trying to finesse. Not, I don't, I don't think they're going to, I don't want to say finesse. I just feel that people are caught. They're caught in this mindset because that's, that's how it feels in the bear market. Just the same way when you're in the bull market, you're caught in the mi mindset of being over exuber over exuberant and just super hype and happy all the time, right? And just super optimistic that you're going to get caught. That's how it goes. In the bull market, that's how you get caught. You think everything's bullish, no matter what. In the bear market, you, you, it's the opposite. You get caught by being bearish, no matter what. And dealing with all that pain. That's how it works. So common sense says it. The data says it. We're in a bull market. For the people that, you know, just keep asking me the same questions over and over again. I mean... Undeniable. I love cryptocurrency. It's the greatest financial asset class to make money. I am sticking by it because it's consistent throughout history. It's the most innovative technology on planet Earth. 
generations of wealth will be made through cryptocurrency. There's a monumental wealth transfer from people that are just not with the times that are lazy to people that are putting in work. And I don't know about you guys, I want you to be a part of it. And I don't want you to miss out on it because of a little price depreciation and this endorphin rush of short-term trading. Short-term trading doesn't work, I'm sorry, but most of the people that are actually talking about short-term trading usually have a job and I'm not gonna point anybody out, I don't care. But from what I've seen and everything I've ever learned in my entire life, short-term trading, made me a minority of my profits and long-term trading made me the majority. So let's focus on the prize. Let's make money. And I, like I said before, it might be different from the mainstream. I don't care if it gets like a lot of views or not. You know, my videos, I haven't been getting as many views. I appreciate if you share it and it might not be the most common thought, right? But I do think it's accurate and I will stay with the accuracy because I actually put a tweet out. You should follow me on Twitter. It was actually perfect for this time. Let me pull up the tweet real quick. The tweet was basically saying authenticity. This is perfect. It's, it's perfect. It's a perfect way to end the video. I said, authenticity trumps image. So although I believe I could get more views by submitting to people's cognitive bias and showing people why it's bearish, that would not be authentic. I'd rather be accurate. So that is who I am. You guys know I chase the truth no matter what in every aspect of my life. So that's pretty much it for this video. Thank you for watching. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel, share the video. If you like the quality of this content, hit like. If you don't, leave some constructive criticism in the comment section below. I always ask for constructive criticism. Subscribe for more video updates. And like I always say, if you don't get with it, you will get left behind. I love cryptocurrency. I can't wait to eat in the next bull cycle and I will not miss out. I will not miss out. Um, and I just wanna say all glory to God. Thank you for watching this video, guys. Peace out.